able to grow and reach their potential free from the dangers of crime and violence. I've made the safety of children and young people a key priority in my police and crime plan, which was published on Monday. Prevention is absolutely fundamental to keeping young people safe. We know that when a young person becomes a victim, their chances of being victimised again or becoming an offender are significantly increased. increased. But the services for young people which are integral to preventing, them, preventing these problems are seriously threatened by cuts imposed by the government, which affects London Borough's ability to provide services. Uh, we have to be realistic, though, despite the wishful thinking from some, that these gaps cannot be filled by City Hall, City Hall alone. I'm taking action to improve the life chances of young Londoners and keep them safe. So we've got to think creatively about how we can divert young people from crime and help them make positive choices. For example, I've worked with my Deputy Miss Sophie Linden to commission the co-design of a whole school prevention pilot programme in Croydon with a focus on preventing violent behaviour and promoting healthy relationships. For example, in November, with the European Social Fund funding, we launched a provision for alternative education providers in 16 London boroughs working with young people who are, able, who are at risk or involved in gangs and serious youth violence. But we need to and will do more. The new London uh, Crime Prevention Fund starts on the 1st of April, and this will include a high proportion of funding for young people. Uh, but it's not just through my policing priorities that I'm supporting young Londoners. I've implemented a whole range of policies to improve the lives of Londoners, including creating my Skills for Londoners Task Force. Uh, I'm convening a roundtable on youth provision with Rio Ferdinand from the Rio Ferdinand Foundation. I'm supporting London Ambitions Careers offer. I'm supporting children in care or care leavers. Uh, through my work in economic fairness, I'm considering what more we can do to understand the causes and effects of low pay and poverty for families. I've launched a 400,000 fund that will invest in sports projects. I could go on, but I think this one probably wants to come in and ask more questions. OK, well, thank you. Thank you for outlining all of that. Um, I do note that in your, your new police and crime plan, there's a clear acknowledgement now of the cuts to youth services. Um, but I think that the challenges faced by young people in London do now go a lot further than that. Um, outside of the area of police, of, of police and crime, a number of the previous mayor's programmes for young people, including school-aged children, are ending or have already stopped. Um, and in the wider world, young people face a large number of cuts. You've discussed today education cuts. You've also talked about the housing benefit rule changes. Um, on Monday, uh, London Youth published their report, Young People's Capital of the World, question mark. Um, and this laid all the cuts out very well and talked about the strategic role of the mayor. So I think the case is quite strong for a proper, wider youth strategy for London, um, with the GLA uh, linking up work between police, schools, councils and other groups and doing something about the wider challenges. So will you, will you look at creating a strategy like this, maybe in conjunction with some of the youth organisations you're talking about? Well, there's already a whole host of work that uh, my statutory deputy mayor, Sir McCartney and uh, deputy mayor Matthew Ryder are doing in this area. And I just gave you a sample of some of the work we're doing around uh, young people. I'm happy to give you further examples of the wider GLA programme for young people from education and youth, uh, uh, stepping stones, citizenship materials, children's rights in London, um, to culture, fourth place school awards, gigs, Mayor's Music Fund, Big Dance Pledge, Big Dance Bus Tour, to around skills. And so there's, there's a huge amount of work taking place already. And I'm happy to write to you if you aren't aware of some of this work. No, I mean, I, I appreciate that there's lots of things going on, and that's kind of my point, that, that you've got different deputy mayors working on different things. There's a risk it might be uh, potentially a bit bitty, a bit uncoordinated. And in terms of engaging with young people, if you ask them to respond to this strategy, this strategy, this strategy, they're not likely to get involved. But if there's a youth strategy, they will get involved. They will tell you exactly what they want. Um, I, I might move on, actually, because I think I need to raise this again with you. But I think there's a good case for a, for a London-wide strategy on this. Um, really pleased to hear, by the way, that you are meeting at last with the Rio Ferdinand Foundation and the Change.org petitioners. Um, I asked you about this in January. Him, well, I've, I've met him before, and you know, he's been a bit busy. I'm, I'm sure you're both very, very busy, but I'm sure they'll be pleased that you're, you're having a round table with them. Um, so finally, on youth services, we've, we've had a number of conversations about this. Um, I wanted to let you know I've had further data back from the councils to update my previous report. Um, I've got new totals for cuts um, up to this financial year of £28 million in budget cuts since 2011, 48% of youth service staff and have, have been lost, and 36 youth centres. Um, I know you didn't put anything in your budget. Um, I can see in the police and crime plan on page 94, though, 
a goal to seek to reduce the gap between demand for youth services and the support councils can manage. So can I ask, have you, have you met any London councils to, to talk about this? I know that's, that's kind of the answer you've given me before, um, that that's how you might try and support the sector. Um, so what, what have you discussed with them? Well, I've got to be quite clear, Chair, that, and it's really important that we don't raise expectations, and I've been quite clear that you talked about the cuts as a consequence of decisions made by politicians in Parliament. But despite wishful thinking from some, I simply can't fill those gaps from the budgets we've got in Seahawk. It can't be done. And we've got to be honest with Londoners. We can't. You know, we can't have a situation where we give Londoners the impression there is money tree in City Hall. Mr. Mount, I'm not to today. The My question but, today but, is about coordinating well, between councils, working on creative I, I ways. Know, but, have you been I, meeting with them? I know, but, but, but it doesn't benefit anybody if expectations are raised outside City Hall, so I've got to be straight with people. The, the new London Crime Prevention Fund, which, which, which starts on the 1st of April, we've reserved 30% of the fund for co-commissioning bids, and it's likely some of this will be spent on projects that support young people and prevent them from becoming victims or offenders. But have you met with councils? That was my question. I met with them yesterday. I mean, I said have you talked about youth services with them? I, 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 amongst other things, uh, we've, you know, uh, we've talked to them about, and Sophie Linden's also met with them again uh, recently. A lot of our deputy mayors, including me, meet with them all the time. Um, you know, and it's really important that we do so because they're at the coal face. Um, you know, and I know it's easy when you're in opposition in, in a council to criticise those in positions of power who make decisions, but you know, they face big cuts from central government, and so you, can the council do a cracking job in difficult circumstances? And I wish all councils would support them. Okay, well, thank you. I'll, I'll get back to this on another occasion.